Welcome back to Explosive Convention Guide number three. I do recommend before you watch this video, definitely check out the video I made on shadow finesses because this is a currently unofficial extension of shadows. It's sort of like a shadow bluff. Quick review, Fishcat could shadow finesse this yellow too. Uh, this is a self shadow, right? Um, Adron sees they have a yellow card and they think, well, this is clearly a bad clue unless he has a way to signal to Piano Bloop where Piano's yellow 2 is. Okay, drum roll please. Here's where stuff gets wonky. Because this is a self shadow, and when a shadow finesse is given, the player with the shadow is forced to respond. They, they immediately have to play. Fishcat can do a dirty, dirty lie. What if Fishcat gives the same clue in this scenario? It's still Adron's turn. He must assume that this is a shadow, right? Because what on earth could this card be otherwise? So the shadow's still on. Uh, Adron will play slot three. And now it's Piano Bloke's turn. He has to think, what on earth just happened? To make Adron, in response to a yellow three being clued, playing his third finesse position, uh, well, he must have thought, he must have been tricked into thinking this is a shadow. Turns out this card is still globally known as yellow two. And what's more is now we need to fix the situation or else this is going to misplay. So the decision we've landed on as to how to correct this information most efficiently and clearly is that all the time, the immediate next player, in this case, Piano Bloop, has to immediately blind play some card that would indicate the real value of this card in some way. This basically retroactively becomes a out of position bluff and Piano Bloop is being told to blind play slot one. This is called a mirage bluff because Adron is currently trapped in a mirage where he thinks he has yellow one and he's hallucinating something. And I call this blind play, Piano Bloop's matching blind play, a lucidity play. Um, so in this case, this is a lucidity bluff. So in order to elucidate to Adron what's actually happening, Piano Bloop must play his first finesse position. But wait, there's more. Turns out this lucidity can come in a few different forms. What if this was a yellow five? and was clued yellow. All right, so again, just checking empathy, right? Adron, it doesn't matter what this card is. Adron will always assume it's yellow one and therefore will always self shadow finesse. As you probably guessed already, this would be calling on a slot two blind play as an ejection. So this is a lucidity ejection as opposed to a lucidity bluff. Now this clue to Adron, Still works as a shadow, but now he just thinks it's a yellow two. All right, so same deal. Uh, plays the yellow three shadow. And now Piano Bloop has to play his third finesse position to signal that this is actually unknown trash. This might seem a little confusing because this was Piano Bloop's third finesse position in this case. But now that this is globally known, uh, it's considered touched and known, and Piano's third finesse position is actually now here. We've covered the discharge, ejection, and one form of the bluff. Um, so there are just a couple other things I want to mention here that are important. Um, one is it should still trigger just a single bluff, whether this is a three or four. So that is, that is one imperfection of the information here. Um, once this plays, Adron has to mark this as either a three or a four. Um, the important thing to remember is it just calls for a single bluff in either case. You, you can still even do this if the card being touched is a duplicate of the card being shadowed, strangely enough. Um, and here's how. So yellow is clued, shadow occurs, and now simply like a blind play doesn't really make sense. So this is actually a really simple fix. All Piano needs to do is discard their duplicate. 
Now, of course, this might, this might be a little weird. Like you might you might think, well, wait, why wouldn't Adrian think uh, he just drew the duplicate and this is still yellow one? To which I would respond, it should be considered much more likely that rather than this being exactly the other yellow two being just drawn, that in fact this was a lie all along and Piano is fixing the situation. All right, so that's the convention. Now let's check out some in-game examples. Now, for each of these examples, I encourage you to pause the video before we continue and see if you can figure out what the mirage and corresponding lucidity bluff would be. In this example, uh, Ephos might be inclined to give a simple two for one with ones or something, but instead, turns out every mirage with a lucidity blind play is a inherent four for one, so uh, there is one hiding here. Green to Hanabi lawyer. Now, they must think, well, this is clearly a shadow, right? This, this, is, this is clearly green one. What's more is this can't be a reverse shadow. So indeed, uh, Hanabi lawyer immediately blind plays this card. As soon as this blind plays, SJ now knows that this must be exactly green too, and this was shadowed. But now it's Paul's turn, um, and he has to elucidate, fix the mirage by blind playing this card. Um, so, ta-da! Now this could only have blind played because this was actually a lie. Suddenly this is known to be a green 3-4, this is known as green 1, and Ephos pulled out a nice 4 for 1. Alright, next up, see if you can spot it. And alright, let's see. Sinus is up, uh, he has a pretty, pretty interesting reverse finesse opportunity, but instead, turns out there is a mirage hiding. Blue to Lambwin. Clearly this is blue one. This is a declined finesse, so... And since the target is in the immediate next hand, Lambwin knows it's actually a self-shadow finesse. So, once again, one, two, three, one, two, three. This plays. This is known. But now it's actually Cross Product who needs to elucidate the situation. And since this is a three, Cross knows that this is a lucidity bluff and he blind plays. Very similar, right? But once again, a clean four for one. Uh, blue two is known globally. This is now known as three or four. And we got two unrelated blind plays. Sweet. All right, this one will be the fanciest one I show today because it's actually in a rainbow variant. Some viewers actually astutely mentioned to me on the last video that rainbow cards are kind of confusing targets for shadows, right? Okay, I'll, I'll cover that in a second, but first pause and see if you can find a very sneaky lucidity bluff here. Alright, here it is. Pink to pour one out. What a strange clue. Now, to my previous point, can this really be a multi-one? Well, I'm gonna say absolutely not, because in advanced play, like, if this is a pink or multi-one, there's zero chance that this a direct play clue would be the best way to get it, right? So even if it is multi one and there's literally nothing else to do, poor one out can see that at least this would be better. Um, this would bluff out the card, and of course that would that would just be a hard three bluff, even if it did match. With that said, um, therefore poor one out has to figure out what the heck the intent of this clue was. It turns out it must. <laughs> Quote unquote must be pink one, and this is another self shadow finesse on pink two. And hopefully, you're getting more used to seeing what this implies. Third finesse position plays. Shock Steel gasps in surprise, but knows that they must hold pink or multi two here. That is a little ambiguous, and that's fine. More pressing is that. <laughs> Poor one out must think this is a multi or pink one, and it's actually a five color clue, so Shock Steel ejects. Uh, and that's it. Another nice four for one, although I, I will concede that this card is potentially a little up in the air as to its exact identity, but I mean, it should be not very difficult. I mean, so for example, like as soon as a green clue is given or something, now it's known to be pink too, right? 
And lastly, just for a little fun, I will leave you with a screenshot of a third example game. It's turn three, Foster's turn. See if you can see some sort of Mirage bluff and the corresponding lucidity fix. Good luck. That's all I've got. Uh, turns out the Mirage bluff is just one of a few different self-shadow signal bluffs <laughs> that utilize the lucidity principle. I don't know if I'll be making a video on any of the other things like for a while, but uh, I hope I hope you all get creative and if you ever pull one of these off, please send me the link of the game. I, I would love to review it. But with that, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share this around so more people can play with shadows and mirages because they're super fun.